السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحد الله فلا مضل الله ومن يرلل فلا هادي الله وأشر لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشر أن محمدا عبده ورسوله يا إلى دين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد ان استك حديث كتاب الله عز وجل احسن حدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر امور محدوثاتها وكل محدثه في الاسلام بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله All praise is due to Allah. We praise Him and we thank Him and we extol Him and we say after the salat was salam, ala khayr khaqillah Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Amma bad. As what follows, really, the most truthful of speech is the Book of Allah, the Barakat Allah, and the finest guidance is that of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. 
and the most evil affairs are the newly invented ones, bidah. And every innovation is a going astray, and every bidah leads to the hellfire. That's Lal Afia. Last week, for those of us who are in attendance, they know we spoke about the importance of having taqwa in our lives. Well, alhamd. And this week, in Allah, we want to speak about something which is of assistance and that will help us on the road to being one of the muttaqun, in Allah, the people who implement the taqwa of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today, in Allah, by the permission of Allah, this advice is something which I hope by the end of today's khutbah will be something that will move us and help us to change our lives around in a practical way, bi'idhni Allah, to the point that, bi'idhni Allah, by the portion of Allah, when we raise our hands and we're in need from Allah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will answer our supplications. Taqwa, as we mentioned last week, is something which is an ingredient that every one of us must have in our lives. And there are things that are hindering us on that road to taqwa. But today, inshallah, I want to offer some practical advice that I hope, bi'idhni Allah, we will understand that the moment that we wake up in the morning, that we are thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for providing us with clothes, providing us with food, shelter, and clean, fresh drinking water. Alhamd. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. There are many ways for us to express our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because whether we have a lot or we have a little, it's very important that as soon as we get up and we realize that we have so much, and some people, they don't even have even a quarter or half or even less than that of what we have. We should say alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah al and with that, I want us to know that life is all about choice. And that as Muslims, we should always seek after choosing that which is good for ourselves. We should always seek after that which is the best for ourselves. But today, bi Allah, I would like you know, to give or share a reminder that is very practical and beneficial for all of us. Because... Allah has told us in many places in this book that life is all about choice. Allah says in Surah Insan, Inna hadaynahu sabila, imma shakru, imma kafura. The Allah he has guided us to two paths. We have two roads to choose in life. That whether we'll be of the people of gratitude and thankfulness or the people of ingratitude. We have the choice in our lives. And if we want Allah Taala to accept from us our du'as, our requests, our supplications, then we have to keep this in mind. And we're thankful for what Allah Taala has given us and has provided us with, then Allah will open up the doors, the floodgates of His Rahmah, His mercy and His generosity to us. If we are grateful, then Allah He will give us more. Allah Akbar. And the Mashab Allah He had reminded us about the importance of dua. He says, In the dua, who will ibadah? He says that, that supplicating, asking of Allah is the essence of our worship. So if we are hopeful that Allah Ta'ala will accept from us our pleas, our requests, our supplications, whenever we're in need. Because we're all in need of things from Allah, especially from Allah, because when we go and ask people, then they know that we're in need, they don't answer our phone. They totally become so busy at that time. So we need Allah in every moment of our lives. So, if we want Allah to be there for us, then we have to always keep Allah in our minds by always choosing 
that which is best for us. And keeping in mind that we want to be one of the muttaqun, people of taqwa. So I would like to share today one very practical hadith as the basis or the foundation of our khutbah today. And this, this hadith is something which every Muslim must know. Every Muslim should know and understand well. And this is in keeping with the, the methodology of the Salaf. The ulama of the Salaf, they used to collect four or five or six hadith and say that these hadith are the foundation of our deen. These hadith, if we were to implement them, understand them well, it would be enough for us to live a good life. For example, they have narrated the hadith of in a halal bayin wal haram bayin wa bayna huma amur mutashabihat al akhir hadith that the halal is clear and the haram is clear and between the two they are those doubtful matters to the end of the hadith and also the hadith of the intention and Abu Khattab Abu Hafs or the Messenger of Allah sallallahu said inma al amalu bi niyat inma li kuri amnin ma nawa Hadith, that all of our deeds are based on our intentions. And every one of us will have that which he intended. To the end of Hadith. And also, None of you truly believe until he loves for his brother that which he loves for himself. And the ayat, wal asr. By the time, Allah just swears, by the time, verily, mankind is in a state of loss. If we were to ponder on these few hadith and this ayah, this surah of the Quran, which is one of the smallest surahs of the Quran, and understand these hadith well, understand the implication of these hadith well, and this one ayah, it would be enough. And this hadith that I would like to share for us today. It's one of those hadith. This hadith has been collected in Sahih of Imam Muslim, Tirmidhi, the Muslim Imam Ahmed, Imam Hanbal, Abu Raydh al who said that, the Messiah of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ayyuh al-Nas, in Allah tayyib la yuqbalu ila tayyib. When Allah amru bil mu'mineen bima amru bil mursaleen. Waqal. He said that Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, is good, and he will only accept that which is good. And that Allah, he had ordered the believers that which he has ordered to the messengers. فَقَالْ يَا يَا الرُّسُلْ كُلُّ مِنَ التَّيِّبَةِ مَا وَعَمْنَ الصَّالِحِ إِنِّي بِمَا تَعْمْنُ الْعَلِيمِ O you messengers, eat of the good things that I provided for you and do good deeds. Verily, I am very ever watchful over you. فَقَالْ تَعَالَى يَا يَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُلُّ مِنَ التَّيِّبَةِ مَا رَزَقَنَاكُمْ O you who have attained faith, O you who believe, eat of the good things that I have provided for you. And then the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after mentioning this and these ayat, he mentioned the case of a man. After traveling a long distance, his hair was disheveled and dusty. He was unkept. And then he stopped he raised his hands to the heavens and he said, Ya Rab, Ya Rab. Calling on Allah by his personal name. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord. He said that his food is haram. His clothing is haram. His drink was haram. And he was nourished on haram sources. So how is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will answer his dua? Allah Akbar. So from this hadith, this foundational hadith, which we have to have and know, and I urge all of us to go and read about this hadith, Look at the shiuch, what they say about this hadith, and understand it well. You must understand this hadith very well, especially those of us living and residing in this part of the world. 
from this hadith, we understand that our food, our drink, our clothing, and how we nourish ourselves, what we put into and on our bodies is directly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answering our supplications. And the people of the past, the Salaf and the Saleh, they would say that we can learn a lot from a person by their eating habits. The Master of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, La akla ta'am illa mu'mina. He said, you should not eat, allow someone to eat your food except they are a believer. We should be in the company of the people of iman, of faith, and we should accompany them to the point that we are that close that we share our food with them. So as Muslims, we must be careful to always choose that which is halal and tayyib. Halal and tayyib. Which means that those things that we have, that we choose to eat, that we choose to close ourselves with and to drink and nourish ourselves with is coming from halal sources of income. And our standard as Muslims should not be according to the standards that these people in the West, they use as a standard of living. As Muslims, we should always strive to live at a higher standard of living. There isn't anything wrong for us to want to have good things in our lives. As believers, we should always strive at having the best. Best food, best clothing, but first and foremost, we should make sure that it is coming from a halal source. Because speaking about halal, we're always concerned to find out, is this halal? Is that halal? Are you sure that's halal? Rarely do we find out do we ask about, is this thing halal and taib? Meaning, is this thing coming from a halal source? We find out that this is coming from funny money, but still, it's halal, so it's okay. La hawla wa la la billah. With that said, we have to understand that eating and drinking is something which is directly connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, accepting our supplications from us. We need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala more than anything else in this life. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith, Sahih, he said that the human being, he is not filled a vessel worse than their stomach. He said if he needs to eat, then he should eat enough to keep his backbone straight. He should not overeat. He said, but if they want to eat more than that, then they should content themselves with one-third for food, one-third for drink, and one-third for air. And Ibn Qayyim al he has stated in his book, Tib al-Nabawi, Medicine of the Prophet, which I urge everybody to have in their home. They should have this book in their home, Medicine of the Prophet. It's a very beneficial book. He said that this hadith is connected to an ayah which Allah says, in Surah Araf, ayah number 31, Allah says, Eat and drink, and do not be of the wasteful. Because Allah does not love those who waste by extravagance, excess. And in this revelation, he says, in Qayyim al in his book, Tibb al-Nabawi, Medicine of the Prophet, he said in this Revelation, he said that Allah directs the believers to four important points of benefit for themselves. To, uh, first is to observe balance in their intake of food and drink. To take in the food which is beneficial for the body. We shouldn't eat junk food. We should take in food which is beneficial for our body and control excess and to have a balanced diet. And he said to eat foods that are healthy and what the body can easily digest in, quant in quantity and preparation. Because he said, deficiency in the nutrients or eating saturated foods can hinder the absorption process and cause illness to the body. And he said it will also cause an excess which is fat, 
which will cause a person to have unnecessary fatty cells in their body. For example, the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, the food, ta'am, the food of ethnane, two people, yet three thalatha, is enough for three. And the food of three is enough for four, four persons. Also, in the, the chapter in Sahih Bukhari, an authority of Imam Umar, of the Anhuma, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that the believer eats in one intestine and the non-believer eats in seven intestines. Meaning that the believer eats a little bit and the disbeliever, they eat too much. They eat too much. Remember Allah Azzawajal, he has reminded us in his book, Ya ilatheena amanu, kulu mina tayyiba marazaqanakum, washkuru lillah. In kuntum As we mentioned at the beginning of our khutbah, when we, once we wake up in the morning and we find that we have food, we have clean water to drink, we have a warm place, we have to be thankful. Allah just says, all oh, you who believe, eat of the tayyibat, the good, wholesome, nutritious things that I have provided for you, and be thankful. Ashkuru lillah. Be thankful to Allah if we are truly worshippers of Allah. May Allah Azawajal make us of those who are true worshippers of Allah. Amen. Holy Holy Hazrat Sakhim wa Atu Bilay. Bismillah. Salatu Salam. Allah Rasulullah. Wa ala alihi wa sahabihi man tabi huda wa bad. So let us end off with a few hadith on the etiquettes and manners of how we should eat. And remember, my dear Salam Iman, that with the advent of the culinary arts and eating in so many different types of foods, especially living here, we have such a variety of foods, we tend to forget that eating and drinking is not always about the food. It's never about the food. Because we eat food so we can survive, so we can live, so we can worship Allah. The main thing that we do when we eat, our intention should be to be a person who can worship Allah. When we eat the food, we want the barakah from the food. We are hopeful that Allah will bless us in this food. There's some hadith that I'd like to share so that of practicality will understand that Islam is a balanced and practical way of life. The Sahaba came to the Prophet Sallallahu and they said, Ya Rasulullah, <clears throat> they said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, we eat, we eat food, but we don't feel satisfied. We don't feel full, we don't feel satisfied. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, perhaps you eat separately. They said, yes, O Messenger of Allah, that is correct. He said, eat together. Bring your food together, share your food together, and mention the name of Allah, and you will be blessed in your food. Another hadith, Hudayfa, Ibn Yaman, who reported that when we attended a meal with the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we would not reach out our hands to touch the food until the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started eating the food first. On one occasion, when, listen closely, Mahdi Basalam Niman, on one occasion, a young girl came running to the plate of food and wanted to attack the food. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam grabbed that young girl's hand. And another man came, a Bedouin man came running to the food to attack the plate of food. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam grabbed that Bedouin's hand. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Verily the shaitan, he wants you hillu, he wants to make lawful this food for you through this girl and this Bedouin. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad. I swear by the one who holds the hand, the soul of Muhammad in his hand, that my hand and the shaitan's hand is in the hand with this girl and this Bedouin right now. Allah Akbar. Lastly, if we want the blessings to descend in our food, in our clothing, in our homes, in our lives, then we have to remember Allah. We have to 
mention the name of Allah Ta'ala, in every step of our lives. When we're going to buy the food, the drink, the clothing, we have to mention the name of Allah Ta'ala, and think, is this thing beneficial for me? Should I buy this thing or shouldn't I? Do I really need to get this thing? Let us leave off with this hadith that, as I mentioned before, the more hands that are in the food, the more barakah will descend into the sahan, into the plate. There's a hadith which has been narrated on Abdul Rahman bin Abu Bakr, Abdul Anhuma. May Allah be pleased with them both. He said, We were with the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and we were over 130 men sitting with the Prophet. This is the number. Over 130 men sitting with the Messenger of Allah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet ﷺ, he asked the people, do you have any food with you? It happened that one man had a saw of wheat flour, which is a bag, small bag of wheat flour, which the people, they took and turned it into dough. They mixed it with water and turned it into dough. One saw, a few handfuls. After a while, they said, the narrator said that a tall, lanky, mushrik man came who was driving some sheep. The Messiah of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, would you sell us one of the sheep or will you give us one as a gift? The mushrik said, I will sell you one. So the Messiah of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam bought that one sheep from that man and he ordered it to be slaughtered and cleaned and he took the liver, the kidneys, the lungs and the heart and he said they should be roasted. And he roasted those things. And then he said, by Allah, Rahman, he said, Wallahi, by Allah, those 130 men, they all had their share of those lungs, those kidneys, and the meat. And they had shares of the meat, and they ate. They all ate. There wasn't anyone who did not eat until they were full from that sheep that was cooked and served between all of them. And they were served in two large trays. Allah Akbar. Yet, after they had all eaten to their full, there still remained food left over that they would take with them on their saddlebags. So this hadith, and there's many, many a hadith that when the Sahaba came together, when they came together and brought their food together, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put the barakah in their food. If we want to be blessed in our food, in our drink, in our business, in our clothing, in anything that we do, let us remember Allah. Let us remember Allah. And always choose that which is halal and tayyib. Remember, inna halal bayin wal haram bayin. Wa huma amur mushabihat. That the halal is clear and the haram is clear. And between the two, there is that gray area that most people, they are unaware of. So we are now at an age where we should know what is right and what is wrong. We should know enough to stay away from the doubtful things. And my practical advice for myself and all of you is, let us be of those who always seek after the best in life. There isn't anything wrong with wanting to have a nice car and nice clothing and to eat good food. There isn't anything wrong with that. But let us be those who use these things in moderation. When we wake up, we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Practically. Alhamdulillah. We wake up and we praise Allah. All praises to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alladhi ahyana. That gave us life after we were dead. And to him is our return. May Allah azza wa jal have mercy on all of us and guide us. And give us that tawfiq to understand that life is all about choice. And bless us and give us that courage to always choose the right thing. Amin, amin, amin. In Allah, we like to saluna ala nabi. Ya yaladina amanu. Salu alim sabtu sinimun. Alhumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. Kama salli ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim. Inna ka hamidu majid. Alhumma barak ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad. كما باركت الله إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا عاتني فتن حسنا أفرق اسمه قنا دامنا قيم سلام